pleased to welcome in Coach Mike Norvell, first year head coach of the Florida State Seminoles, formerly of Memphis. Uh, Mike, welcome to the show. I well, appreciate you having me on. Uh, you know, unique way to, to be able to connect, but uh, we're definitely in unique times. Absolutely. So being that this is the 24-7 sports social distance chat, have to open up. Uh, how's your family doing during quarantine? Are you able to spend a little more dad time or have any Netflix shows for us? Well, I mean, it's uh, it's definitely been, uh, you know, a, a, a interesting transition. You know, we actually moved in a week before spring break. So we had just started spring ball. We, were, we got uh, got moved in and, you know, I tried to do that intentionally so that we'd have a little bit of time to get the house settled. Little did I know that one week would turn into seven weeks. And so I think I've got every every box unpacked. Uh, you know, I've uh, I think I've done every every uh, uh, honeydew the chore that I possibly could have. I think we got it to, as settled as it could possibly be. Awesome. Uh, so, Mike, uh, look, looking at your history here, for such a young coach, you have a pretty impressive coaching tree. I, how do you go about picking coaches to be on your staffs, and, and what are those key factors that, that you look for in identifying those coaches? Well, you know, I've been fortunate to be a lot around a lot of great coaches. I think, you know, through the through the last five years, I've had to hire, I think, around, you know, 34, 35 coaches during that period, which I believe is the most in the country. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things that I, I'm, I'm always looking for guys that are relationship-based. Uh, you know, I, I truly want the the total package when it comes to a coach. Uh, you know, there's plenty of guys that are that are phenomenal with, with the X's and O's, and there's there's some guys that are better in, in, in the relationship aspect. But, you know, I really – truly look for the for for somebody that's that's uh, great and, and well-rounded in all phases because you know I want I want to be around coaches that uh, have that all-inclusive approach to the development of their student athletes and and so you know number one I always try to find guys that are, are great men that want to impact kids you know off the field uh, to help them on their journey and then I, then I want to find guys that are tremendous teachers uh, you know because you know every every place is going to be different every scheme is going to be a little bit different but if you can teach and you can develop you know, that helps put our guys in the best position to be successful. And when they know they're around coaches that care about them uh, more off the field than just the jersey they number th that they wear on the field, I think you got a chance to, to have a, 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 a special relationship. And so those are the guys that I truly look for. We, we, we spoke with Jeff Scott about two weeks ago, and he said not in his wildest dreams could he have envisioned his first head coaching job would be conducted in, over the spring almost entirely over Zoom chats. Uh, how has it been for you, and are, are you planning to use that technology more uh, now that everybody's learned it what, what, once the quarantine does lift? Well, I tell you, it's been, uh, you know, I tell our guys all the time, sometimes the greatest challenges that we have uh, sometimes bring the greatest blessings. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, you know, definitely a new experience. And I think there's, there's you know, not only Zoom, but, uh, you know, a lot of the different things that we've had to do in, in connecting with our student athletes and building it, being able to uh, to meet them at their need or things that we can use moving forward. And, you know, just, uh, you know, specifically with our staff, I mean, you know, we've been meeting every single day, uh, you know, in, in some capacity, whether it's recruiting, whether it's, you know, staff development, uh, we've been able to pour into each other, you know, really with as a staff scattered, uh, you know, across the, across the country, but then also with our players. And so I think there definitely are some things that we can, that we can take from this and be able to apply moving forward that'll help us, you know, even, you know, uh, operate more efficiently than what we've maybe done in the past. Mike, Mike you have a reputation in the business as somebody who is a planner and, and somebody who's very organized and tries to think through all the scenarios, but Give us something here that you could not anticipate that Mike that actually surprised Mike Norvell and and how how you had to overcome it as far as challenges in this time. Well, I mean, I think it's just the constant change. I mean, from the minute that that we knew that we were moving to a to a remote uh, remote education, uh, you know, we're going to have a lot of the online classes. Just trying to develop a a plan for for what the next step was. Um, you know, that's that's always something that's always uh, you know ever evolving in your mind. But then, you know, with each guideline that was kind of you know you know put on, and and you know, as more and more research was found, I mean, it's there's been constant change to what uh, you know not only you you know, our conference, our university, you know, nationally, government, state, everybody has a, has a has a, a say in kind of a guideline of how we're going to operate. So just trying to make sure that uh, we're being the, the most effective and efficient with our time, uh, that we're, we're connecting with our players, making sure that they're staying safe, and then still being able to provide them with the with the the, the best resources possible um, for them to continue to learn. You know, just you know, another example is a couple of weeks ago, the NCAA moved up to from four hours to eight hours of of, of uh, uh, possible meetings. And so just you know, with that constant change, just trying to stay up uh, with maximizing that time and truly uh, being able to, to help impact our players the best way possible. 
are, are you able to teach and install your entire offense and defense over Zoom, or are you just trying to get a base and then add elements come the fall? What, what, what's it like for you? You know, we're trying to be smart with that. You know, we only got three practices in here this spring. So uh, I, do, I do believe that you can install, you can teach. You, you know, we're trying to teach our guys an entire different language uh, than what they've ever known before. So just trying to give them a, a comfort in, the, in, in how we communicate, a comfort in understanding the overall concept. And then really from there, just try not to overwhelm them with information. I think sometimes the best growth that you can have is, is through, the, uh, through the application of what you learn in a meeting room and taking that to the field. The thing obviously we're missing out with is the, the on the field uh, you know, approach and being able to learn through some of those mistakes and some and through some of the corrections. So uh, we're trying to balance that as best as possible, not to overwhelm them, but also to give them a sense of confidence in what we're asking them to do conceptually. Certainly, you know, missing that class on grass thing is never uh, is never easy. Uh, speaking of creativity and, and overcoming challenges, how have you all had a change of recruiting approach during this time with, with being a new staff, no, no evaluation period even? I mean, it it's one thing not to have guys not be able to come to campus, but for y'all not to be able to go to their campus has had to be a, a really tough thing for you. It is. And, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, we were so excited uh, about, you know, March and being able to get kids on campus. Uh, you know, this is also the first year that we've ever had a February dead period. And so, you know, we go through, uh, I think we ended up having nine or 10 days in January, we could get out and uh, you really try to finish that, you know, uh, the 20 class. And then you know, also have eyes forward to 21 and 22. And, um, you know, then when February hit, you know, we wanted to, to make sure that we did as, as much work, you know, in evaluating film, trying to get ahead, trying to get an understanding of who these guys are and, and connecting with the high school coaches. And then March was going to be such a big month for us, March and April, uh, as we were practicing, because when we're connecting with these kids, they get an understanding of who we are, but they want to they want to get a chance to see how we, you know, how we execute and how we operate. And, you know, practice was going to be a big part of that. Um, but, you know, when that when that's taken away, now we've got to find new ways to be able to connect. And so uh, we're trying to do as much as we can, you know, virtually with these guys, whether, you know, having them call us, uh, um, you know, on FaceTime, you know, obviously the different, the different uh, uh, modes of, of, you know, being able to talk ball and, and things like that with, uh, with them. And then just try to paint the picture for what the future is going to be. And, uh, you know, at, at the end of the day, there's a, there's a lot of different ways that you can approach recruiting. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited about where we are and the guys that we're uh, uh, building those relationships with. And, uh, you know, it, at the end of the day, it's just going to be continuing on that process of uh, finding the right fit for Florida State. So we have an article coming out on Wednesday on 24-7 Sports that talks about uh, this time this year, there are more commitments than we had in the prior two class, uh, classes on, on May 5th combined, right? So what we think is a lot of schools are probably just filling up. Maybe they'll kind of jettison kids later if they don't fit their plans, or a lot of kids are just trying to find a, a spot and then maybe look around later. We see some schools that already have 10 plus commitments, some schools with, with 15 plus commitments. Uh, what is your philosophy on taking a commitment from a player who has not yet visited your campus, if, if you have one? Well, I mean, you know, I'll be honest, we've had, we've had multiple kids that have reached out, you know, wanting to commit and, uh, you know, some kids that we've never met before, some kids that, uh, you know, you know, really like, like what they hear, but, you know, the, the relationship's not where maybe I want it to be before we're going to accept that commitment because, you know, I want to do it the right way. And at the end of the day, there's a lot of coaches that'll take a commitment and then, you know, later on down the road, try to, you know, look at different ways of, of possibly getting out of things or, or uh, you know, I want to, you know, we're, we're, we're brand new to the, to, to Florida state. We're brand new and building a lot of these relationships. And so uh, you know, we're building, we're building those relationships, getting to know each other. And uh, you know, I want to make sure that, uh, that we know exactly the, the young men that we're bringing into the program. And uh, you know, if there's a kid that hasn't been on campus before, well, then it would, it would obviously have to have, be a pretty strong relationship to where with myself or one of our coaches that have that have seen him that know him that, that can can answer a lot of the questions that you have as you're going through the re, uh, the recruiting process that you would gain in the spring or, or when a kid does come on campus so every situation is unique to itself but for us I, I want to make sure that like I said that fit is critical because you know at the end of the day when we when we get the right fit of the, of the young men that, that come to Florida State, I believe this can be a special class, and I believe that we're going to put together a great class that's going to help continue to build off the foundation of what we've already started. And speaking of, of special players, obviously you can't get into the specific names, but uh, locals and legacies seems to have, have been a focus of your staff's recruiting with a, a 
greater amount of talent than normal in the Panhandle area, and then also a a, a large amount of quality legacy prospects whose whose dads or or you know family members played for Florida State back in the day. Uh, what, is that something y'all talk about a lot, like circling in on, on that group and seeing uh, who of those players might fit? I mean, absolutely. And uh, I think when you look at uh, uh, the tradition of Florida State football, I mean, it, it's, it's a special family. And, uh, you know, I think when you get a, get a chance to, to have those, those core relationships and being able to, to build and develop, uh, whether it's from, from you know, family members that have played you know, year, from, from years prior to, to you know, even guys that are you know, just here you know, regionally in the area, I think it's important to uh, the more that you can know about a young man and the more that a young man can know about you and, and the pro program and, and the expectation of the place, uh, that's what makes it special. And so when you look, uh, you, you go six hours around Tallahassee, whether it's going north into Georgia, you know, going west, or whether it's into Louisiana, I mean, you, you pick the place. I mean, there are, there are so many quality athletes. There's so many guys that, uh, that, that, you know, have a special future in front of them that for us, it's just about making sure we're build the right, the right relationship, build it off the right things. And then, you know, show kids the, the opportunity that's here at such an incredible institution uh, with uh, with one of the best uh, with one of the best traditions in all of college football, no doubt, uh, Mike. You you have a pretty good track record, obviously, for for building elite offenses. One thing that we've been studying on uh, at twenty four seven Sports to make our our ratings better is, is tracking how much quarterback production tracks to the next level. Right? It used to be there was a ton of projection involved. It seemed because the offenses you ran in high school were so different than college, and and what we ran in college was so different from the NFL. Lately, we've been seeing a little bit more that maybe the the numbers matter. It, is that something that you've evolved your stance on over time with, with ha- having to make sure a guy in high school is very productive at that quarterback position and a little bit less of, of a physical projection, perhaps? I mean, uh, absolutely. And I think, you know, what, uh, you know, numbers are numbers, but when you get a chance to, to see how somebody plays within an offense and, you know, what they're being asked to do within that office and then tie that to the production of, of what you see. I mean, when, you know, if somebody just has a high completion percentage because all they're doing is throwing spots or bubbles, you know, obviously that's, you know, that doesn't necessarily show what, how it's going to transition to the next level. But I mean, you look at the, at the, the last two, quarterbacks that we just signed there in January or in February. And, um, you know, it was, it was pretty special to, uh, to see, you know, what they were able to do in their high school careers. You got, you know, a couple state players of the year and, and, and uh, uh, you guys were highly productive in the yards and touchdown and, and low interceptions, but, you know, it, within offenses that really were surrounded by their skill set and, and them pushing the ball down the field and being able to make those decisions. And so, um, you know, that's something I believe in. It's, it's about finding guys that can operate uh, that, uh, you know, obviously make everybody on the field or around them better uh, by the way that they play. And, uh, you know, I think we've been able to do that here early with the first two quarterbacks we were able to sign. And that's going to be something that we can continue to do uh, as we're moving forward. And, and Coach Norvell's uh, Golden Retriever is also a big fan of quarterback production. Obviously, we'll, we'll, we'll see if that makes the final cut on this episode. Uh, Coach, I, we have a lot of coaches we talk to say, hey, I, I never go back and watch the old film for, from w- w- what these guys did under a prior staff. It, to me, it's, it's totally a clean slate. But I got to ask you, I, given that you really didn't have spring practice, you had three and only, what, one in shells, I think it was. So do you go back and watch, if, if for nothing else, just to look at the player's strengths and, and maybe ignore their weaknesses? Or, or are you watching everything, Guy, or, or what do you do? Yeah, I do. I mean, I actually go back and, uh, you know, even when I got the job, you know, I went back and watched uh, as much film as I possibly could before the first signing day. And uh, because, you know, I think you've got to be able to assess uh, the, 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 talents that guys are able to show on film. There are a lot of things that I don't know about them. I don't know what they were asked to do. I'm not, I try not to get too technical in into the, the strengths and weaknesses when it comes to that. But, you know, I try to I try to get a sense of who they are, um, you know, what they do in some of those critical moments, decision making. And then, you know, it's our job to build them and, and to develop them. And so I'm excited about the group that I have. I've watched I've watched every game from last season. I've watched all of our guys. Uh, but it is it's on them to be able to 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 build and formulate what my opinion of them is, is now because now I know what they're being asked to do I know what they're you know what how I want to see them progress and so that's going to be a big a big factor and unfortunately we don't get spring ball to to be able to see that but you know we're going to, have to be extremely efficient when we do get back here in the fall and uh, making sure that we find out what our guys you know are, are truly um, you know, put them how they're going to put themselves in a position to be successful in what we ask them to do absolutely uh Mike, what are your thoughts on the name, image, and likeness legislation that's that's likely to pass, and and how do you plan to use that to your advantage? 
Well, you know, it's something that, uh, you know, is, is definitely a unique time in, in college football. Uh, you know, a lot of these changes that are that are coming about, uh, you know, I'm always about uh, the, the betterment of, this, of the student athlete and, uh, you know, trying to, to make sure that those guys are, are, are achieving at the highest level. And there's, but right now, there's still a lot of questions on what that looks like and what that's going to be. I know there's, uh, you know, still meetings ahead and uh, you're trying to formulate uh, the, the best plan possible. But, uh, you know, I know that, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's going to be a, a position for guys to to continue to, to to build and develop their brand and who they are and uh you know at, at the, it's something that i think the more education that we have and uh, you know obviously the better better that we can help educate our student athletes it's going to be positive for everybody awesome coach mike Rovell, thanks so much for joining us on the 24 7 sports social distance chat thanks so much <laughs>